Good morning, everybody. So I have um, some really good God loves you scripture, and it's a good thing um, to be near God, and it's a good thing to be afflicted because it pushes us closer to him um, and humbles us just as he asks us to be. And so let's just start with the prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Lord, Heavenly Father, our beautiful, beautiful Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Father God. Thy will be done, Father God, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, Lord, our trespasses. And Lord, Heavenly Father, help us to forgive others as we, as you forgive us. And Lord, do not let us be led into temptation, Father God, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, thine is the glory, thine is the praise, the thanksgiving, the majesty, forever and ever. Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I love you, I adore you. And I just thank you that I can rely on you for my daily bread and that I can rely on you for your will being done that thy kingdom is already here and that it's conquered the world it's conquered the darkness thanks be to god i give you all honor glory praise and thanksgiving in your son's precious name lord yeshua hallelujah and amen all right guys so as i said this is you know based off of god's love for us and so um I don't have to find that one again, but I'm going to start with John 3.16 as kind of our um, foundation scripture for today, if you will. I like that, actually. The Holy Spirit just gave me that. Um, I'm going to start. It's first John, sorry, John 3.16. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son so that everyone Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his, send his son into the world that he might condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. It says, anyone who believes in him is not condemned. Hallelujah and amen. But anyone who does not believe is already condemned because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. And if you're not there yet, you're okay. You're, you know, you're listening, you're seeking. God will, will lead you to him. The, the more you're drawing near to him, the closer he'll draw near to you. Even if, even if it's just a mustard seed of faith to be like, okay, I see how dedicated this woman is to a God that I don't even know if I believe in. Or, you know... Um, I've been treated badly by people who say they follow Jesus. And so I don't know about this lady. I don't know about this God. You know, this is different than anything I've ever heard about the Jesus. You know, even if you go to church every Sunday and this is different than what you're hearing and, and you're not sure, it's okay. Just give it to him. Just give it to him. That's what this whole video is going to be about is his love. And his salvation. So hallelujah and amen. In Psalm 73, it talks about God's ways being vindicated. Um, and so I'll just go ahead and read the psalm. The verses that I picked, though, are 21 and 28. Um, the kind of another foundation scripture, if you will. Um, God is indeed good to Israel, to the pure in heart. But as for me, and maybe you, my feet almost slipped. My steps nearly went astray, for I envied the arrogant. I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I see how they're flourishing all around us. They have an easy time until they die, and their bodies are well fed. They are not in trouble like others. They are not afflicted like most people. Therefore, pride is their necklace, and violence covers them like a garment eyes bulge out from fatness the imaginations of their hearts run wild 
They mock and speak maliciously. They arrogantly threaten op oppression. They set their mouths against heaven and their tongues strut across the earth. Therefore his people turn to them and drink their water. It says they turn here and drink in their or, and drink in their overflowing words rather. The wicked say, How can God know? Does the most high know everything? Look at them, the wicked. They're always at ease and they increase their wealth. Did I purify and wash my hands in innocence for nothing? For I'm afflicted all day long and punished every morning. If I had decided to say these things aloud, I would have betrayed your people. It says, betrayed the generation of your sons. When I tried to understand all this, it seemed hopeless. It says it was trouble in my eyes. If this is you, he understands. That's why David, he said David. <laughs> well, actually, I think this is uh, an Asaph um, song, but... Um, when I tried to understand all this, it seemed hopeless. Until I entered God's sanctuary, then I understood your, their destiny. Indeed, you put them in slippery places. You make them fall into ruin. How suddenly they become a desolation. They come to an end, swept away by terrors, like one waking from a dream. Lord, what a rising you will despise their image. When I became embittered in my innermost being, it says, uh, my kidneys, my innermost being was wounded, was stupid. I didn't understand. I was an unthinking animal towards you. Yet I am always with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will take me up in glory. Or it says, or will receive me with honor. Love that says, who do I have in heaven but you? And I desire nothing on earth but you. Hallelujah and amen. My flesh and my heart may fail, but my God, but God is the strength of my heart or the rock of my heart. They portion forever. He's our portion forever. It says, those far from you will certainly perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, God's presence is my good. I have made the Lord God my refuge so I can tell about all you do. Um, it says in another translation, um, it says, I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all you do or all your deeds rather. Um, and so when he's talking about you know, those far from me will certainly perish. You know what I'm thinking? What it makes me think is not the, the second death, right? So I'm hoping that, you know, by the grace of God, he can shine the light on what that truly means, you know, the first and the second death. Um, and you want to perish. You want to die to yourself so you can gain, you know, even... Even John the Baptist, you know, God calls him one of the greatest. Um, and even John the Baptist, you know, um, can fall short. You know, all of us fall short of the grace of God. Um, now, forgive me, I kind of lost what I was going to say about that. But hopefully the Holy Spirit will help me remember but um, in Psalm 40, it continues on about the same kind of theme. It says, Lord, my God, you have done many things, it says. How much you have done, Adonai, my God. Psalm 40, and verse 5 is like the highlight um, verse, if you will. It's Thanksgiving and a cry for help. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me and heard my cry for help. He brought me up from a desolate pit, from a watery pit, because it says, you know, um, the evil are tossed around 
by the sea. And even Jesus says, you know, you will no longer be tossed around by the sea. The sea kind of represents wickedness um, in the Word of God. So it says, he brought me up from the desolate pit and out of the muddy clay and set my feet on a rock, making my steps secure and put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Hallelujah and amen. How happy is the man who has put his trust in the Lord and has not turned to the proud or to those who run after lies. Lord, my God, you have done many things, your wonderful works and your plans for us. None can compare with you. If I were to report and speak of them, they are more than can be told. That is why, you know, I can make so many videos and still be confident in what I'm saying because I could make a video every second of every day of my entire life, even the missed, the missed part, the, very, the last almost four years where I was, you know, I didn't know God this way, you know, and for another billion years, and I could still not cover his amazing works that he's just done for me alone for me alone and I, I believe that with everything I got um, because I believe that I mean I'll just give you an example of, of something that was that seemed awful to me and that was traumatic for me um, back in Nebraska um, I had an asthma attack while I was pregnant with my daughter and I was living in a very small town of about 25,000 people. And um, I went to that hospital and I had already been quite frequently over the last, the, you know, the couple months prior um, due to, you know, um, my asthma being bad um, because of all the tears that I had been crying um, because of the situation that I was living in. And so the anxiety, um, the domestic abuse, and, um, you know, just being pregnant, you know, um, they told me when I arrived that I did not need steroids and that I had been there too much for my anxiety and for, um, not being able to breathe. I don't know how somebody can go to the doctor or to the hospital too much because they can't breathe. But that is what I was told. And um, that is not the first time that I had been denied care for asthma. And so, um, which I was diagnosed with when I was a little kid. Um, and so I drove another, I drove 40 minutes away to the very next hospital. And I remember I was in a little small town and they had just told me, I didn't need steroids. I didn't need the treatment that I had been seeking. I get to this next closest hospital who just happens to have a NICU and is a woman's hospital, actually, in fact. And I, I the last thing that I remember is I walked in, I remember walking into the doors and I remember looking at the person sitting at the desk and just asking, you know, to the best of my ability, you know, I just said, I'm pregnant. Um, I can't breathe. Help me. And then the next thing that I remember after that is I remember, you know, um, them injecting two different drugs into two, you know, the, the arteries of both of my arms because they couldn't mix. And, you know, if they did, I died, but I needed both of them. <laughs> Um, and then I hallucinated for I'm not sure how long. And when I came out of that, that's when I realized that I had um, actually given birth to my daughter in a coma at 25 weeks. And so my asthma had, like God knew, God knew my asthma was so bad that I was going to need to be put in a coma and have a machine breathe for me. And if I, if, if that hospital in um, Fremont had you know nebraska had treated me who knows we might have both been dead 
because they didn't, you know, they, they wouldn't have had, they definitely, you know, they may have been able to treat me, you know, but had I given birth to Lily then, you know, my daughter, then, um, you know, she would have had been life flighted, you know, to the other hospital with the NICU. That's, that was already there, already set up for her. And so, and, and I don't, know what your trauma story is but i guarantee you i can relate on so many levels i mean how traumatic is that right that you can't breathe and the doctor is telling you essentially they don't care but now and, and it took me you know like i didn't realize that right away like when i got here like it, it took him a while to show me that but i'm grateful because i get to share that with you I get to share with you how something awful and traumatic, you know, can be seen in a whole different light. A whole different light. Because God can show it to you. He can reveal it to you. And so I'm going to start back at Psalm 40, verse 6. It says, You do not delight in sacrifice and offering. You open my ears to listen, or you hollow out ears for me. I love that. You do not ask for a whole burnt offering or a sin offering. It says, then I said, see, I have come. It is written about me in the volume of the scroll. I delight to do your will, my God. Your instruction lives within me. It says instruction within my inner being. And just yesterday in the video, I was talking about from our inmost being, living water will flow. Um, I proclaim the righteous. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. See, I do not keep my mouth closed. Not, I do not restrain my lips. As you know, Lord, I did not hide your righteousness in my heart. I spoke about your faithfulness and salvation. I did not conceal your constant love and truth. Constant love and truth from the great assembly. Lord, do not withhold your compassion from me. Your constant love and truth will always guard me. For troubles without number have surrounded me. And by the way, that's still me. You know, my body, you know, poverty or lack, it's just crazy. Um, thankfully, my sins no longer overtake me. My sins have overtaken me. And un I'm unable to see. They are more than the hairs of my head. So even if your sins have overtaken you and they're more than the hairs of your head and your courage leaves you, it's okay. It says, Lord, be pleased to deliver me. Be pleased to deliver me. And he is. He just, it says, let go, or, or sorry, Lord, be pleased to deliver me. Hurry to help me, Lord. Let those who seek to take my life be disgraced and confounded. Let those who wish me harm be driven back and humiliated. Let those who say to me, aha, aha, be horrified because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation continually say, The Lord is great. I am afflicted and needy. The Lord thinks of me. You are my helper, my deliverer, my, deliverer, my God. Do not delay. I adore that verse. I adore you, Father God, for that verse. It says, I am afflicted and needy. The Lord thinks of me. You are my helper, my deliverer. My God, do not delay. Hallelujah and amen. Do not delay for your people, Lord. And he doesn't. Thank God. Psalm 118. Um, the verses, you know, 14 through 29. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start at the beginning, though. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let Israel say his faithful love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his faithful love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord his faithful love endure say his faithful love endures forever. I called to the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and put me in a spacious place. He answered me with freedom. Mm, he does. He does. He did for me. He will for you while I was still flipping him off. <laughs> you know, 
because I cried out to him for help. That is why. That is, that's it. That's all I did. And I didn't even know if I believed in him. I said, I don't even know if you're there. Please help me. And I didn't even say it. I cried and I wailed it so loud that somebody heard it as they were driving away. It says, I called to the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and put me in a spacious place. The Lord is for me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The Lord is my helper. Therefore, I will look in trump triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in nobles. All the nations surrounded me in the name of Yahweh. I destroyed them. They surrounded me. Yes, they surrounded me in the name of Yahweh. I destroyed them. They surrounded me like bees. They were extinguished like a fire among thorns. In the name of Yahweh, I destroyed them. You pushed me hard to make me fall, but the Lord helped me. It says, perhaps the enemy pushed me hard. For I was pushed hard to make me fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. There are shouts and joy and shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand performs valiantly. The Lord's right hand is raised. The Lord's right hand performs valiantly. I will not die, but I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord disciplined me severely, but I didn't, but he did not, but did not give me over to death. So you can be disciplined to the point of, you know, um, even wanting, you know, death. Like Paul talks about that. I just, we despaired even to the point of death. But our God is faithful. It says, but did not give me over to death. Open the gates of righteousness for, open the gates of righteousness for me. I will enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous will enter through it. And remember Jesus says he is the gate for the sheep. He says, I will give thanks to you because you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become my cornerstone. This came from the Lord. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, because it says, for this is the day of salvation. You know, today is the day of salvation. Every day you need to be saved. Every day. And every day he will be faithful to save you. He will save you from every evil and every wickedness. And by that, I don't mean he's going to prevent them from happening. He may and does and will. But I'm not, I'm not saying that that's the absolute guarantee that, that you won't be disciplined or that that won't befall you. But, you know, uh, Paul, I believe it was, that said, you know, to um, take all suffering as a form of discipline. Like, so when we take it in that way and in that perspective, God will, you know, reveal the wrong if, if he needs to reveal us to us that. Um, but regardless, he's going to teach us. He's going to teach us something beautiful and gorgeous or maybe lots of things out of that. So that's just what I wanted to make sure to share. It says, um, I will give thanks to you because you have answered me and became and have become my salvation rather. I did read that. It says, Lord, save us. Lord, please grant us success. Hallelujah and Amen. He who comes in the name of the Lord is blessed. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God and has given us light. We bind the festive, we bind the festival sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God in Jesus' name, Lord. Bind the festival sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar in Jesus' name. You are my God and I will give you thanks. You are my God, I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. I love that Psalm 119 is titled The Delight in God's Word. Because I do. And you will too. You will too. If you're not there yet, it's okay. I get it. I spent 38 years pretty much despising it. Um, yeah. 
So back to our, you know, foundation scripture, God, um, John 3, 16, God loves the world. And um, in Romans 8, 37 through 39, it says, you know, nothing can separate us from his love, from God's love in Christ Jesus. It says we are super conquerors. We're more than conquerors in the one who loves us. Um, faith triumphs. It says whoever believes, and it is a gift. Ephesians 2, 1 and 2 will share that with you, that it's a gift and it's free. Um, I'm going to go to Romans 5. So we just talked about Romans 8. I'm going to go to Romans 5. Faith triumphs. It says, therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have shalom with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have also obtained access through him by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, our hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also rejoice in our afflictions. That's why I can confidently praise God for every awful thing that has ever happened to me because I'm seeing him turn it into beauty. And also he's teaching me an insane amount. Like, you guys, I can't tell you how often he blows my mind. Blows me away. I'm in awe of being in awe of him. Hallelujah. It says, and not only that, but we rejoice in our afflictions because we know that affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character and proven character produces hope. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Love that. I'm going to read it again. It's Romans 5, 5. This hope will not disappoint us in Jesus' name it won't because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. I'm just going to go ahead and proclaim life to you whether you have Holy Spirit or not because God's love has been poured out into your heart through the Holy Spirit who was given to you. Hallelujah and hallelujah and hallelujah and amen. For while we were still helpless, so while you're still helpless, because we can't save ourselves, at the appointed moment, Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will someone die for a just person, though for a good person, perhaps someone might even dare to die. But God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than, more than since we now have been declared, declared righteous by his blood, we will be saved through him from wrath. For if while we were enemies, so while we were still sinners and helpless to save ourselves and enemies with God, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. It says, for if while... For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? By him living through us. By the life he lived and, and the example he lived and him living through us. It says, and not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have now received this reconciliation through him. You have now received this reconciliation through him. In Jesus' name, I believe you have. Whether it's today, tomorrow, you will know your day of salvation. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah. You will know your Savior. You will. I, I believe. I believe his arm is not too short. His arm is not too short to save. Therefore, just as a sin entered the world through one man, that's Cain, or I mean, Yes, well, through Adam and death through sin. Oh, yes, because Adam was the first one, Adam and Eve, because he was actually the one that was supposed to tell Eve, you know, and, and, and be, you know, love her as Jesus loves the church, if you will. To, for, you know, that's the best way I could put it. Um, it says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin in this way, death spread to all men. Because all sinned, all have fallen short of the grace of God, all of us. In fact, sin was in the world before the law. But sin is not charged to a person's account when there is no law. So remember, there was no law when, when Adam and Eve were, you know, created. They still were able to violate it, right? 
as he said. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin in the likeness of Adam's transgression. He is a prototype of the coming one. And so, you know, um, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin in the likeness of Adam's transgression. And so we're still, we still have the same command. We would like to think that, you know, our commands, you know, with, you know, love God with everything we got and love our neighbor as ourself, you know, those are the two greatest commands. But in dwelling within those commands is don't eat that. Don't eat what the world wants to feed you. Don't eat with the lies of Satan and the adversaries and the, and the authorities and the spiritual powers in this world. He says, don't eat their fruit. It's bitter. It's poison. It's going to kill you. Do not eat its fruit. Do not separate yourself from them. You know, be, be the set apart creation that I have made you to be. And once you have, you know, you're, you know, you're going to have a much better time. Just, just, that's just the way it is, you know, but, um, when we're eating the fruit of the world, even if it's just occasionally, like it's, you know, we're, we're still, we're going to bear the icky fruit of that, that world. You know, we want to eat the fruit of God and the bread of life and drink of the water of life, the living water, so that it springs forth from us, you know, but, um, but God will feed us. He will give you your daily bread, and that's not just physical bread. Man cannot live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so I just want you to know that it's still the same command. I guess this is my whole point. It's just... It's, it's the same command since the beginning. Do not eat of the world's fruit. You know, because we can't, we can't know the difference between good and evil without God. We can't. We can't tell the difference between bad fruit and good fruit. You know, um, that's why, you know, there's going to be people that are going to hate me, even though, you know, I'm giving this to them free. I don't want anything retur in return. You know, they don't have to love me. You know, I just want them to love God. You know, well, actually, they do have to love me. But not for me. <laughs> that's God's command, not mine. Um, but I guess for me, that's not that's not my purpose. It's not for you to love me. I, I'm already infinitely loved by a beautiful creator. Um, it says in Zephaniah, chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 4. Three. Actually, 14 rather, I apologize. Although I do encourage you to read these scriptures, you know, on your own. Sing for joy, daughter Zion. Shout loudly, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed your punishment. It's done. Hallelujah. Tell us die. He has returned back your he has turned back your enemy. The king of Israel, Yahweh, is among you. You need no longer fear harm. On that day it will be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear. Zion, do not let your hands grow weak. Yahweh, your God, is among you, a warrior who saves. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will bring you quietness or He will renew you with his love. He will delight in you with shouts of joy. It says, I will gather those who have been driven from the appointed festivals. So if you've been driven away from church, this is for you. <laughs> they will be a tribute from you. Let's see. From Jerusalem. And a reproach on her. It's an obscure Hebrew word, I guess. 
is the best translation they could come up with. Yes, at that time, I will deal with all who afflict you. He will deal with all who have afflicted you. I will save the lame and gather the scattered. So especially if you were, you know, picked on because you're broken, if you're lame, and you've been scattered all over the world, you know, and, and that doesn't mean, you know, necessarily, literally. I will make those who were disgraced throughout the earth, earth receive praise and fame. And at that time, I will bring you back. Yes, at that time, I will gather you. I will give you fame and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes. Yahweh has spoken. Job was able to, you know, he lost everything. He lost all 10 of his children. He lost all his flocks. He lost everything except for his wife who told him to curse God and die. And um, his three friends who told him there, there must have been something. You, you must be, you must have sinned so bad for this to happen to you, for God to have punished you so severely. You, you have, you've got to have done something wrong, you know, and, and they were lying to him. They were saying, oh, the righteous flourish, you know, God takes care of the righteous, you know. The wicked ones, you know, they don't succeed. Their plans don't succeed. They were lying to you. They were lying to you. Yes. Life in Jesus is prosperity. It is life in abundance. It's just, it may not look that way to the world. My life to other people is probably sad and crazy. <laughs> um, I don't see it that way. And I thank God for that because I used to think that too. And so, um, you're not too far gone. You're not too broken. You're just perfect for God. Um, he likes the most broken because the, the, he, he, the humble he favors the humble. He resists the proud. And you don't have to actually humble yourself. You can already be there because you're drowning in your sins and you're drowning in your afflictions. Um, I'm going to go to Luke 15. Um, this is the parable of the lost sheep. All the tax collectors and sinners were approaching to listen to him. So all the people that other people looked down on. The tax collectors, the Jewish people hated them. It says, and the Pharisees and scribes were complaining that, why are you talking to all these sinners? It says, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. What's wrong with him? So he told them this parable. What man among you who has, a, who has 100 sheep and loses one of them does not leave the 99 in the open field? And go after the lost one until he finds and leaves him in the wilderness. God can leave you in the wilderness to go after um, the sinners. But it's okay. He's, he's giving you his Holy Spirit. It says, when he has found it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders. And coming home, he calls his friends and neighbors together, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who didn't need repentance he's chasing after you he's pursuing you Radaf, it's the hebrew word in psalm 23 that says goodness and mercy shall follow me it's pursue hebrew is such a beautiful language glory to god for hebrew it's it if you you don't have to know Hebrew, like you don't have to speak Hebrew to understand, you know, look up these words, you know, love, mercy, grace, um, repentant, you know, look up these words, you know, what they mean in, in, in Hebrew, um, it'll help, you know, deepen your, your faith, um, it says, or, it says, or what woman who has 10 silver coin, coins or 10 drachmas, 
Um, a silver coin is a denarius. It says if she loses one, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls her woman friends and neighbors together saying, rejoice with me because I have found the silver coin I lost. I tell you in the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who repents. He's going to sing songs over you. It says He also said a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that I have coming to me. So that's you asking, um, God, give me, give me what you say is already mine. <laughs> um, it says, so he distributed the assets to them, the inheritance. It says, not many to them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all, together all he had and traveled to a distant country. He, he, he went away from his father, right? He strayed away where he squandered his estate in foolish living. After he had spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he had nothing. Then he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. He longed to eat his fill from the carapods. The pigs were eating, but no one would give him any. I'm sorry. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food? And here I am, dying of hunger. That's me, by the way. I'm one of his servants. I have plenty of food to give. Come, I will help. By the grace of God, I will help you. I get up, go to say, I'll get up, go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired hands. So he got up and went to his father. But while the servant was still a long way off, he was watching for him. He was watching for him. The daddy was watching for him. So he went up and went to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. Jewish men didn't run back then. That was a very disgraceful thing. But he ran to his son that left him and, and, and asked for his inheritance before the father even died. It was very disrespectful. Very disrespectful. This father just saw him. Saw him coming home. He ran, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father told his sons, like before he was even done talking, he says, quick. Bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And bring the fattened calf and slaughter it. And let's celebrate with a feast because the son of mine was dead. He was alive again. He was lost. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Now his older brother, or his older son rather, was in the field as he came. So he was out there working. Still working for his father, being loyal to his father, right? Now his, son, his older son was in the field, and as he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he summoned one of the servants and asked what these things meant. Since your brother is here, he told him, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound, has him back healthy, he says, in another translation. It says that he became angry and didn't want to go in. He didn't even want to go into his father's house anymore. He was so mad that his brother, who just squandered everything, got to just go in. He just came back and that was all he had to do. So his father came out and pleaded with him. That's what our fathers do. We just plead with us. I am pleading with you. Be reconciled to God. He tours you. 
He adores you. He adores you. He adores you. He adores you. Nothing can separate you. Nothing. It says, when he replied to his father, look, I have been slaving many years for you, and I have never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who had devoured your assets with prostitutes, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. It's a son, child, he said to him. You are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. We need to rejoice when people find, or not find, when God gives them the faith to believe. We have to rejoice and we can't look down on them on their journey and their joy. We have to celebrate with them. And, you know, it says the righteous fall, you know, um, uh, six times or seven times or whatever it is, you know, God will save them in seven. Don't judge their journey. If they can say Jesus is my Lord and Savior and the Son of God, he, I know he was born, he lived and he died and he rose again to save me. If, if they can say that, it doesn't matter what their journey looks like. It does not matter. It does not matter what your journey looks like. He can, his arms not too short, short to save. Um, back in Psalms again, this is a plea for rescue. And so this is how he's, he's showing us. He gives us an, an abundance of ways that we can come to him. And I just pray that he just highlights that for you. And he just uses me to show you and leads all the people that are necessary to the videos. I know he will. I believe he will. But I'm just, I'm just saying that for the benefit of the people. Um, so it says, save me, God. This is Psalm 69. Save me, God, for the water has risen to my neck. I have sunk deep in mud. I have sunk in deep mud and there is no footing. I have come into deep waters and flood sweeps over me. I am weary from my crying. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. Those who hate me without cause are more numerous than the hairs of my head. My deceitful enemies who would destroy me are powerful. Though I did not steal, I must repay. God, you know my foolishness and my guilty acts are not hidden from you. Do not, do not let those who put their hope in you be disgraced because of me. Lord, God of hosts, do not let those who seek you be humiliated because of me. Amen, Lord. God of Israel, for I have endured insults because of you, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my brothers and a foreigner to my mother's sons because zeal for your house has consumed me. And so once you get zealous like I am, like God has given me this gift, you'll become a stranger, and people will persecute you and insult you. It says, and then the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Jesus says that too. They will hate you because they hated me first. I mourned and fasted, but it brought me insults. I can relate to this. It's even highlighted in my book. It says, you know, I mourned and fasted, but it brought me only insults. I did. I did. I, I wore sackcloth as my clothing. I was a joke to them. Those who sit at the city gate talk about me, and drunkards make up songs about me. And I want you to know the the hurt in my heart that I have it's not for myself my heart hurts for them that's the sad look on my face it's like in my mind I'm just thinking or you know or maybe it's not I'm thinking it's like a spirit of have mercy really it's really it's it's, it's more like a feeling that I can put into words as that have mercy on us all in Jesus name but as for me, Lord, my prayer to you is for a time of favor. In your abundant, faithful love, God, answer me with your sure salvation. Hallelujah, Lord. Answer us all with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the miry mud. Don't let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and from the deep waters. Don't let the flood water sweep over me or the deep swallow me up. Don't let the pit close its mouth over me or over us, Father God. 
Jesus name. Answer me, Lord, for your faithful love is good in keeping with your great compassion. Turn to me. It says, don't hide your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Answer me quickly. Draw near to me and redeem me. Ransom me because of my enemies. You know the insults I endure, my shame and disgrace. You are aware of all my adversaries. Insults have broken my heart and I am in despair. I waited for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but found no one. Instead, they gave me gall for my food. And for my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. If people are feeding you bad fruit, cry out to your God. Cry out to your God. I promise you. I promise you because he does. He will answer you. I promise you. Oh, dear children of God. <laughs> if you're not my children, I don't, I don't know if I can credit myself with that. But I definitely am, am your sister. I'm your familiar. No matter what. No matter where you are. It says, even if you're one of my enemies. Quote, unquote. I just, I just use that as, because that's the word the Bible gives me. It says, let their table, because you're not my enemy. I love you. You're not. It says, let their table, let their table set before them be a snare and let it be a trap for their allies. Let their eyes grow too dim to see and let their loins continually shake. Pour out your rage on them and let your burning anger overtake them. Make their fortification desolate. May no one live in their tents, for they persecute the one you struck and talk about the pain of those you wounded. And guilt to their guilt, do not let them share in your righteousness. Let them be erased from the book of life and not be recorded with the righteous. I just plead mercy in Jesus' name for my God. It says, but as for me, poor and in pain, let your salvation protect me, God. I will praise God's name with a song and exalt him with thanksgiving. That will please Yahweh more than an ox, more than money, more than anything else that we can give him, more than a bull with horns and hooves. The humble will see it and rejoice. You who seek God, take heart. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not despise his own who are prisoners. Let heaven and earth praise him. The seas and everything that moves in them, for God will save Zion and build up the cities of Judah. They will live there and possess it. The descendant of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will live in it. And it even says, you know, um, it says he does not despise his own who are prisoners. It says all were imprisoned in disobedience. All. So that means all are his. Genesis 9 um, 11 through 17 confirms that. It's the covenant of peace that's for the entire earth. It's for the entire earth. I did a video on that as well. A couple videos, actually. I think maybe even a few of them. In um, the New Testament, you know, it, it confirms this again. It says in 2 Corinthians. Do, 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 do. Um, 6, chapter 6. says working together with him we also appeal to you i do i appeal to you familia don't receive god's grace in vain for he says i heard you in an acceptable time and i helped you in the day of salvation here's that scripture and i forgot about that i had it added this it says look now is the acceptable time now is the day of salvation that's why it says you know do not heart if you hear his voice while it's still today do not harden your hearts you know, because today, every day is the day of salvation. Every day. That's why it says today is the for today is the day the Lord has made. Be glad and rejoice in it. If you woke up this morning, that means his mercies are new this morning. Um, you're not dead yet. Hallelujah. Um, you've died already, though. <laughs> you've died and you're alive in Christ. Hallelujah and amen. It says, and continuing in verse 3, 2 Corinthians 6, 3. We give no opportunity for stumbling to anyone, to anyone. We welcome everyone so that the ministry will not be blamed. But as God's ministers, we commend ourselves in everything by great endurance, by, afflict by afflictions, by hardship, by difficulties, by beatings, by imprisonments, by riots, by labors, by sleepless nights, by times of hunger, by purity, by knowledge, by patience, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the message of truth. That is why I brag about my afflictions and the hard things that I've gone about. Because I know 
a lot of people don't believe me, and that's okay. It's okay. God will help. By the power of God, through weapons of righteousness on the right and the left, through glory and dishonor, through slander and good report, as deceivers yet true, as unknown yet recognized, as dying and look, we live, as being disciplined yet not killed, as grieving yet always rejoicing, as poor yet enrich enriching many, as having nothing yet possessing everything. And I love the has grieving yet always rejoicing and and it's always grieving it's grieving for the world that's me at least in my that's what I read for from it it says we have spoken openly to you Corinthians our heart has been open wide it has my heart has been open wide it's open wide to you you are not limited by us but you are limited by your own affections I speak as to my children as a proper response you should also be open to us it says, do not be mismatched with unbelievers for what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship does light have with darkness? What agreement does Christ have with the law? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? And what agreement does God's sanctuary have with idols? For we are the sanctuary of the living God, as God said. And the only thing that we have, you know, in agreement is that we were there too at one point. We're not there anymore, hallelujah and amen, but... We were just like them. It says, as God said, I will dwell among them and walk among them like he did in the garden. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them. Come out from among them, me familia. And be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch any unclean thing and I will welcome you. I will be a father to you and you will be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord God Almighty. It says, therefore, dear friends, since we have such promises, let us cleanse ourselves from every impurity of the flesh and spirit, completing our sanctification in the fear of God. Um, and then it goes into joy and repentance, if you want to. I, I actually did a video on that one as well. Um, let's see, I just have a few more. I just want to build you up. And so if you're, <laughs> you know, like really bent down low, that's why I, that's why I keep giving i keep pouring out the hope in jesus name this is the cry for help this is psalm 143 it says lord hear my prayer and your faithfulness listen to my plea and in your righteousness answer me do not bring your servant into judgment for no one alive is righteous in your sight for the enemy has pursued me crushing me to the ground making me live in darkness like those long dead my spirit is weak within me my heart is overcome with dismay and you know um, it says, uh, Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. So if your, your spirit is weak or poor, um, he, he, he says, you're blessed. He says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all you have done and reflect on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. I am like parched land before you. Answer me quickly, Lord. My spirit fails. Don't hide your face from me or I will be like those going down to the pit. Let me experience your faithful love in the morning, for I trust in you. Reveal to me the way I should go because I long for you. Hallelujah and amen. Rescue me from my enemies, Lord. I come to you for protection. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. He can teach you to do his will. May your gracious spirit lead me on level ground. Because of your na name, Yahweh, let me live. Let your righteousness deliver me from trouble and in your faithful love destroy my enemies. Wipe out all those who attack me, for I am your servant. Um, I love how it continues on in um, the King's Prayer in Psalm 144. It says, May the Lord my rock be praised, who trains my hands for battle. He trains you and my fingers for warfare. So when they do come at you, he, you're going to know. You're going to know how to answer them in, in all the ways. It's beautiful. Um, he'll give you that gift. He is my faithful love and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer. He is my shield and I take refuge in him. He subdues my people under me. Or he subdues peoples under me. Lord, what is man that you care for him? The son of man that you think of him. Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Lord, part your heavens and come down. Hallelujah, Lord, please. Touch the mountains and they will smoke. Flash your lightning and scatter the foe or scatter them. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down from heaven. 
Rescue me from deep water and set me free from the grasp of foreigners whose mouths speak lies, whose right hands are deceptive. God, I will sing a new song to you. I will play on a ten-stringed stringed harp for you. The one who gives victory to kings, who freed his servant David from the deadly sword. Set me free and rescue me from the grasp of foreigners whose mouths speak lies, whose right hands are deceptive. It says, turn our sons... Or then our sons will be like plants, nurtured in their youth, and daughters like corner pillars. They are carved in the palace style. Our storehouses will be full, supplying all kinds of produce. Our flocks will increase by thousands and tens of thousands in our open fields. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Amen. Your flock's going to grow, Father God. <laughs> and then therefore our flocks will. Our cattle will be well fed or will bear heavily loads of beef pregnant. Um, heavy can be a good thing in Hebrew where in Hebrew times, um, heavy with his abundance and his love, there will be no breach in the walls, no going into captivity, no plague, no miscarriage. It says, um, and no cry of lament in their public squares. Happy are the people with such blessings. Happy are the people whose God is Yahweh. Hallelujah and amen. Um, he will answer. Another one in Isaiah 59. Verses 8 through 26. It says, let's see. Actually... I'm going to start at verse 5. Will the fast I choose... Actually, this is verse... This is 58. Although I do like that one, so I suggest if you want to know um, the fast that Jesus approves of, that's, that's a really good one. Um, but this is Isaiah 49. So forgive me. I was, for some reason, in the wrong... It says, this is what the Lord says. I will answer you in a time of favor and I will help you in the day of salvation or by the nation. Oh no, that's the other one. It's, it's sorry. It says that I will help you in the day of salvation. I will keep you and I will appoint you to be a covenant for the people to restore the land, to make them possess the desolate inheritance. Saying to the prisoner, prisoners, come out, come out. And to those who are in the darkness, show yourselves. They will feed along the pathways and their pastures will all be on, be on all the four or barren heights. Forgive me. They will not hunger or thirst. The scorching heat, their sun will not strike them. For their compassionate one will guide them and lead them to springs of water. I will make all my mountains into a road and my highways will be raised up. Mustard seed faith moves mountains. <laughs> See, these will come from far away, from the north and from the west and from the land of Sinim, or perhaps modern Aswan in southern Egypt is what it says. It says, for the Sinites, Sinites shout for joy, you heavens, earth rejoice. It says, mountains break into joy joyful shouts, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. Zion says, the Lord has abandoned me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child or lack compassion for the child of her womb? Even if these forget. So even if your parents, your own mother has forgotten you, I can relate. Yet I will not forget you. God will not forget you. Even if your own mother has forgotten you or forsaken you or hurt you or broken you, God won't. Look, I have inscribed you on the palm of my hands. He's inscribed you in the palms of your hand of his hands. Your walls are continually before me. Your builders, it says, or sons, hurry. Those who destroy and devastate you will leave you. Look up and look around. They all gather. They come to you. As I live, this is the Lord's declaration. You will wear all your children as jewelry and put them on as a bride does. For your waste and desolate places and your land marked by ruins will now be in, will be indeed too small for the inhabitants. Hallelujah, amen. And all, and those who swallowed you up will be far away. Yet as you listen, the children that you have been deprived of will say, this place is too small for me. Make room for me so that I may settle. 
Then you will say within yourself, who fathered these for me? I was deprived of my children and unable to conceive, exiled and wandering, but who brought them up? See, I was left by myself, but these, where did they come from? I was left by myself. See, where did they come from, Lord? They came from God. Hallelujah. It says, this is what the Lord God says. Look, I will lift up my hand to the nations and raise my banner to the peoples. They will bring your sons in their arms and your daughters will be carried on their shoulders. Kings will be their foster fathers and their queens. Or, let's see, princesses. It's another translation. Your nursing mothers. They will bow down to you with their faces to the ground and lick the dust at your feet. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Those who put their hope in me will not be put to shame. Can the prey be taken from the mighty or the captives or the righteous be delivered? For this is what the Lord says. Even the captives of a mighty man will be taken and the prey of a tyrant will be delivered. I will contend with the one who contends with you. And I will save your children. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh, and they will be drunk from their own with their own blood, as with sweet wine. It will taste sweet as they drink it. Then all flesh will know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob, the Mighty One of Israel. Um, and this is uh, the last one. It's First um, Chronicles 16, and how appropriate that it's. I believe this is David's prayer, if I remember correctly. So First Chronicles, and he's, you know, the, the prince, you know, of Israel. This is a reign forever. First Chronicles 16. I'm going to read 8 through 36, and so that'll be the last one. It says, actually, I'm going to go ahead and start at 7. David's Psalm of Thanksgiving. On that day, David decreed for the first time and gave thanks to be given to the Lord by Asaph and his relatives. Give thanks to Yahweh. Call on his name. Proclaim his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell about all his wonderful works. Honor his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek Yahweh rejoice. Amen, Lord. Please, Lord, in Jesus' name. I know he will. I only ask these things. All these things that I ask, by the way, I already know they're going to happen. I already believe they are happening. So I just want you to know. But I do it for your benefit so you can, you know, learn from me. I'm trying to be the example, I guess. Um, search for the Lord and for his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his wonders and the judgments he has pronounced, the judgments of his mouth. You, you offspring of Israel, his servant, Jacob's descendants, his chosen ones. Second Peter 2 9, you're also chosen. He is the Lord our God, his our first Peter 2 9, rather, sorry. He is the Lord our God, his judgments govern the whole earth. Remember his covenant forever, the promise he ordained for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham, swore to Isaac, his oath to Isaac, and confirmed to Jacob as a decree and to Israel as an everlasting covenant. I will give the land of Canaan to you as your inherited portion. When they were few in numbers, very few indeed, and temporary residents in Canaan, wandering from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their behalf. Do not touch my anointed ones or harm my prophets. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonderful works among the peoples. For the Lord is great and highly praised. He is feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. It's true. Ascribe to the Lord, families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to Yahweh the glory of his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord. Bring him a thanksgiving sacrifice. Bring him a repentance sacrifice. Whatever, whatever you feel led to bring to him, bring it to him. In the splendor of his holiness, tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be shaken. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice and let them say among the nations, the Lord is king, Adonai is king. Let the sea and everything in it resound. Let the fields and all that is in them exult. Hallelujah, amen, Lord. And the trees of the forest will shout for joy before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. 
We say, save us, God, of our salvation. Gather us and rescue him. Rescue us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and rejoice in your praise. May Yahweh, the God of Israel, be praised this day and from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen. And praise the Lord. Praise Adonai. Love it. And so I love how it just, on one more verse, so David left Asaph and his residence or his relatives there before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, the minister regularly before the Ark, according to the daily requirements. We can minister to the Lord as well. So. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to end with a blessing upon you in our Father's Word. In Numbers chapter 6, it says this. And I believe wholeheartedly he is. In Jesus' name I do. In Jesus' name I do. May Yahweh bless you and protect you. May Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh look with favor upon you and give you shalom. Hallelujah and amen. I love you, family. I love you, familia. I love you so much. And it's because God adores you so much. He adores you. For God so loved the world. And he's loved it since the beginning. He made a covenant of peace with us. In Genesis 9, before the law of Moses. And so live and rest in that. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. Bye, guys. <laughs>